everyone, and welcome to today's Comic-Con panel at home. We are celebrating the art of collaboration. My name is Chris Villan, and I am a digital content creator and actor, and I'm so excited to be here with you today. We have brought together a fantastic panel of duos working across all forms of entertainment, including film, television, video games, streaming, and esports, to talk to you about the tricks of the trade. Um, we are going to start off with Hiro and Janelle. You two sure make a talented husband and wife duo. You've both worked on such cool projects like Cobra Kai and Ozark. Can you speak about how you two work together to create the amazing stunts we see on screen? You know, there's a certain comfortability level that comes with working with your significant other. And sometimes it's a blessing. Sometimes it's a curse. Um, <laughs> you get so comfortable that you have to sometimes dial it back a little bit. Um, but we, we keep it really professional on set. There's a lot of times we'll go from the beginning of a show to the end and people don't even know that we're married. Oh, wow. Um, so we definitely have gotten to that point in our career relationship, our professional relationship that I know when I'm like putting a piece of choreography together, I'm like, okay, I know he's not going to like this or... <laughs> You know, I put something together and he's like, yes, I love it. We, we know sort of which way the other person is thinking and things want to go. And there's also that level of being able to say like, no, I hate that. We're not doing that. Because you have that relationship with the person to be able to say, okay. Where, you know, you don't always have that with somebody you're just working with on a professional level solely. Sure. So we definitely have that ability to be like, and eh, that's not where I want to go. Let's take it this way or no, let's do this instead. Makes it a lot easier working <laughs> with someone that you are comfortable with. And uh, we collaborate really well together and uh, she's Mrs. Boss. So it works out good. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, Hiro, you also work as second unit director. Can you talk about the experience of directing compared to stunt coordination? And uh, do you get to direct Janelle ever? Um, well, second unit directing, take, directing takes on a whole different set of responsibilities for me. Um, I enjoy stunt coordinating and designing all the action and putting that stuff together and bringing in all the right people and just having such a big action scene put together. and. Um, but when I'm directing, it's a little bit different because now I'm running the ship and I have to make sure everything's running efficiently. Not only still keeping everybody safe and wanting to get cool shots, but I got to make sure everything still works out the way it's supposed to. Um, directing is my passion and I, I enjoy it so much. And um, just, you know, having the honor last year of directing on season three of Stranger Things was so cool. Just so much fun stuff that we got to do. And being able to direct main cast was incredible for me. Um, so it was a lot of fun. I really enjoy it a lot. That's huge for me. I'm, I have the biggest grin on my face because I just love hearing about your guys' work. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so I'm going to switch gears and jump to Avery and D. Rich. Uh, you are both leaders of Denver-based competitive video games, 303 Sports. Can you talk about your respective roles with the organization and how you collaborate? Avery, you want to start? Yeah, so I am a professional video game streamer, which means it's a fancy wording to say I play video games and people watch me. <laughs> um, but uh, basically, I run and manage their stream team. So I help teach others how to be successful like I have um, on the team. And I really just coach them, help manage them, help them feel confident in what they're doing and, and teach them how to grow a community like I have. Um, so yeah, that's, that's yeah. kind of my role in 303 Esports. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my role is a director of talent acquisition. So that could be anything from recruiting uh, players for a team that's uh, on a game for our, like playing under our brand, or uh, it could be along the lines of a management position that we need filled. So I'm kind of in on all the interviews there. And then uh, obviously for a talent acquisition and the in the field for for gaming competitive gaming i have to like go out and kind of do my research and you know figure out who would be a good successful fit that also matches our um the qualities that we value at 303 so yeah that's what I, we do i love it i love it avery you are a former beauty pageant contestant turned professional streamer with one of the fastest growing channels on facebook gaming as well how do you balance being creative and building a community with also supporting 303 and is there any overlap between the two 
Yeah, of course. Like I said, I coach other people how to be successful like I have in the past. So, um, you know, there's a lot of things that go into a stream outside of just going live and playing video games. The part of a stream that people see is, you know, when your camera is on and you're just sitting back, relaxing and playing video games and they're like, oh, wow, your career is so easy. You just play video <laughs> games all day. And it's like so far from the truth. Um, I'm sure like all of the people here on this panel would understand, you know, the enjoyment that you get is, is the watching part or, you know, just watching the content is the most enjoyable part. But there's so much work that goes in on the back ends that people don't even realize. And so... Uh, my role in 303 is kind of teaching people how to be a business person or a businesswoman or a businessman when you're running a stream because really that is what makes you successful, not your skill at the game, not your you know ability to turn on a camera and play a video game, but how to run a successful business as a streamer. So yeah, they definitely overlap. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, uh Ariel and David, you are also a talented husband and wife duo. How did you both meet? And can you tell us more about your collaboration process? Sure. So we met working on a project um, on an independent feature. So I guess working together has just been like a very natural part of our relationship. Um, and I think like what it meant for cheer was something that was so involved and, you know, so much of editing is for a documentary is writing. And so what ended up happening is that we were pretty much never not working. Um, <laughs> we kind of like came up with some of our best ideas, like at midnight over a glass of wine kind of a thing. Or two. <laughs> or two. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it's a, uh, it was an advantage and, and a disadvantage. Like I think Jamal said, it's a blessing and a curse. I mean, we did have to start commuting separately at a certain point to work just to have a little bit of alone time, but yeah, at the end of the day, we'd come back and make solemn vows not to talk about work anymore and then go on a walk and come back and you're writing stuff down. And, <laughs> yeah. So, But ultimately, I think the projects that we've worked on together have benefited from it because there is just like such a constant like stream of ideas going between us. And so, you know, we did do a lot of work on it outside of the office, which I think ultimately was a benefit. So, yeah, yeah. And then in terms of the actual process, um, I think everyone on the panel would agree that you kind of, I mean, part of the, part of the joy of, of being a part of a, a, a collaborative team is that everyone can sort of recognize what their strengths and respective weaknesses are and then, you know, fill in each other's gaps a little bit. So, you know, when oh, I don't have to worry about that because she'll have an idea for that or, or she'll have a take on it or she'll do a pass on it. And you can kind of just keep moving forward and just and it's less lonely to you know especially what we were doing a lot of which editing is is very uh, solitary work so it's nice to have someone who totally totally gets it the balance there is key and i'm so it's it's so nice that um you guys have found that and found a way to like work with it and stuff um Cheer was praised for how thoughtfully and beautifully the series showcased the often deeply personal stories of the Navarro team members. Can you share a little bit about how you approach this during editing? Sure. Yeah. So um, I think with something like this and definitely, you know, a lot of the athletes that we worked with really opened up and like bore their soul for us. Um, and I think something that we constantly had in mind was that we had to earn this um not only as filmmakers but earn it for the audience as a viewer um you know so it, it it became kind of a um a process of like laying the groundwork with this end idea in mind of like you know this is the the climax of this person's story and the crux of it all and how do you how do you tell the story over six episodes in order for that these moments to really land and for an audience to be able to connect with them um, so it's, it's a very long process and it takes a long time to figure it out. And there's a lot of, um, false starts and failures and undos and redos, of course. Um, but ultimately it's, it's, it's important. And so it really matters. It's, it's worth the time. Yeah. I think the, the whole team beyond us, the larger collaboration of the whole team behind the show is on the same page when it comes to particularly that aspect of it, the, the, the personal stories. Um, from the director, Greg Whiteley, um, down through the, uh, the 
directors of photography that we had um, and our whole story team and the rest of the editing staff because we have about three or four other editors that worked on the show. And that's that there is a strong sense of duty that you have to these people who are sharing this mm. with you and uh, have let you into their lives. And um, you're anxious to, to per portray them honestly and truthfully um, and, and, you know, honor their, their contribution to the show. So absolutely. If you let that kind of guide you, um, you can't go wrong. Really. Yeah. There you go. Um, so we have a lot of incredible female leaders on this panel. Uh, this question is kind of going to span through all of you. I want to hear all your answers. What are you doing to collaborate with or promote women in front of and behind the camera? Let's start with Avery. So I actually started the first ever all females esports tournament for the game PUBG, which is the game that I play primarily. Um, and we had over $5,000 raised for charity over the course of this tournament. We had hundreds of girls sign up, which I totally was not expecting, um, <laughs> and tons of viewers. I think there were like 7,000 concurrent viewers on our first live stream of this tournament, um, especially for an industry that's so taboo right now, like gaming and especially women in gaming, which is even more taboo than that. Sure. Um, yeah, that's, that's basically what I did. Um, for females. And then on top of that, which is a more recent project of mine, I actually started a clothing line um, using my past experience in modeling and um, the pageant industry. I started a clothing line that's made to empower women. So it kind of has a business style with a little bit of a, an innovative look to it. And I'm hoping that that will make women feel empowered and um, also teach them how to style themselves. So for women who don't know how to piece together outfits, my former experience in modeling, um, I've pieced together outfits and created an innovative web design that allows people to put together an entire look as opposed to just buying one piece of clothing. So I'm hoping that that empowers women across the board. That's incredible. I'm sure it already has. Um, Janelle, how about yourself? Well, you know, we're definitely seeing a lot of uh, women directors, a lot more women on set behind the scenes when it comes to camera assistants, grips, props, every department you go on set and there's just more women, which is so refreshing to see. And, you know, it's one of those things where we just, we support each other. We have instances, I'm sad to say, still on set where there are times where our male counterparts are less than respectful and, you know, we'll walk up to each other and say, hey, I, you know, I saw how he talked to you and I'm really sorry that he did that or Not me. No, no. <laughs> it, 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 still, it is still out there. And that's one of the things as, you know, stunts is very much a boys club and as a woman and as a woman stunt coordinator and being in there and being in the conversations with what's happening and what's going on as far as the action, it's, you know, you look around, it's like, oh gosh, I'm so outnumbered right now. But, you know, you really, it can get really hard because you look around and you're like, okay, I've got, you know, some backup here, but. <laughs> she holds her own though. And she, <laughs> I mean, people, you know, they once they realize once she starts talking or what she, if she's performing, she holds her own and, there's no doubt that the respect is there for her once they see that. But that's the other thing too is, you know, I, myself and conversations I've had with other women in the industry, like we want, we don't want to be there just because we're women and we're being given a chance. We want to be there because we truly are the best at what we do mm. and we deserve a seat at the table and we are there because we're good at what we do. And, you know, we're being given more chances to do that. And, you know, I have a lot of younger girls, cheerleaders and gymnasts and martial artists who reach out to me on social media and I'm like, hey, how do I get into stunts? So it's always really nice to you to be able to encourage them and say, okay, this is what you need to do. You already have a specialty. This is sort of how you break into it and just encouraging more women. There's more roles, action roles being written for women, which gives us more opportunity to actually be performing as stunt performers as well. That's great. I love that. Um, Ariel, how about you? Yeah, um, it was 
really important to everybody on the producing team that we hire a lot of women for cheer, um, both in the field and in post-production. And so much of that was um, to make sure that we were creating an environment where our subjects would feel very comfortable being filmed while they're, you know, working out in the gym and everything else. But then it was also, you know, why not hire a bunch of women? Like people hire a bunch of men all the time, you know? <laughs> and so we kind of just took this opportunity um, to just like staff up with a bunch of really incredible ladies. And I think something that kind of happened out there in the field is that we all recognize the opportunity that we had and how rare the situation was. And so, um, you know, it, it almost felt like we had something to prove. You know, it's like if you're going to have a show that's staffed by a, a vast majority of women, like we better make it damn good kind of a thing. And so yeah. we all really just like, um, you know, gave it our all and um, really went for it. And I think that, you know, cheer is proof that like a bunch of women are very good at filmmaking, you know? Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, so this question is going to span through uh, everybody as well. Uh, what have been some key collaborations and collaborators that you have that have been instrumental in growing your career? Let's start with Ariel. Sure. Um, yeah, I, you know, I think the industry can be really hard to break into. And so a lot of times, if you don't have somebody that is opening a door for you, um, it can be really hard. And so I've had several people throughout my career that have really helped me. Um, I first got my, my first uh, editing job in TV when I was 25. And it was another editor, Gary Pollock, who uh, recognized like a skill or a talent in me and um, vouched for me and gave me an opportunity on the show Lock Up and on MSNBC. And I'm really grateful to everybody at that company for giving me a chance because I really didn't have all that much credit under my belt. Um, and then definitely, of course, in, in more recent time, Greg Whiteley, the director of Cheer and Last Chance U, um, he's given me a lot of opportunities throughout my career and has allowed me to advance um, in many ways. And um, I'm just hoping that as I move forward in my career that I'm able to, you know, extend that same graciousness that other, other people offered me and help other people into the industry, especially, um, you know, groups of people that aren't as represented in the entertainment industry. Absolutely. David, how about you? Oh, wow. Um, well, it's interesting. There's kind of that metaphor for collaboration that it's like a good marriage if you have a good collaboration. And I guess with this panel, it's pretty literal. <laughs> um, <laughs> but in the same way that I guess the relationships you were in before you partner with someone or get married, um, are beneficial or influential on your ultimate relationship. I think that was the case in my own career. It's, I had a lot of different collaborators and, and whether they were successful or not, or good or bad, you'd learn something from each one, something key, not only about the medium, which is you know such a collaborative medium, but also um, just in how to work with people. And a lot of, I think early on, it's probably true with relationships too, <laughs> you are, a little more insecure when you're younger and you're trying to prove yourself and you worry that your voice isn't being heard. And, and as you kind of find the right person and you have more experience, you kind of mellow out and you realize like, I don't need to do all the lifting. Um, I am valued, I am being heard. And, and also you are more open to what the other person has to give. So I guess that's a cop out. I guess all, all collaborations I've, I've had have been uh, uh, influential. I love it. I love it. Um, let's move to Hito and Janelle. All my collaborations have done something for my career, for sure. Um, early on in my career, um, I worked a lot with some stunt coordinators and myself were coordinating together things together and collaborating on shows way back when. And uh, like Chad Stahelski, David Leach, um, Sam Hargrave, and these guys have moved on and started directing bigger features. Uh, Chad Stahelski's done the whole John Wilkes, John Wick series, um, Dave Leach's Deadpool 2, the second Deadpool and Hobbs and Shaw, and then Sam Hargrave just recently on Netflix, they put out uh, Extraction. Um, so seeing those guys move up and, and, and what my passion is as wanting to direct, that's just something that I've always kept with me. Um, and, you know, I mean, over the years as well, I mean, I've, I've collaborated with several people, but I've had a first AD, Tudor Jones, who I've worked on several shows with, and 
that guy always pushes me for every show he gets on, pulls me in to coordinate and pushes for me to second unit direct. And so I owe a lot to that man. And um, so there's a lot of people that have influenced my career for sure. That's so great. Janelle, how about you? I mean, I think the ultimate collaboration for me has been with Hito. I've learned so much from him and have even gotten opportunities that I wouldn't normally have received. Um, but you know, it's interesting because as a stunt double and stunt performer, every movie you work on is a collaboration with your actress or actor. And so every TV show, every film I've worked on, I've had the chance to collaborate with my actor to say, okay, you know, how, if, if you don't want to do the choreography this way, how do you feel more comfortable doing it and being there, you know, when they're doing their action? as a cheerleader and then also, you know, them coming to me and saying, hey, I don't feel comfortable doing this and then going to the stunt coordinator and saying, okay, listen, is there any way we can work around this? She doesn't feel comfortable doing it this way. Can we possibly do something that feels a little bit more safe? Um, and that's been the great thing is just really getting to like have those relationships and, um, you know, some of the ones that stick out of my, Angie Harmon, who I doubled on Rizzoli and Isles was amazing. I absolutely loved her. Um, Sandy Bullock, who I doubled on Bird Box, was wonderful. And of course, Karen Gillan, who I doubled on Jumanji. That's just been the two Jumanji movies that we have done together. It's been a really fun, empowering collaboration to play that female action hero. That's awesome. Avery and D. Rich, what about you guys? Yeah, uh, Janelle stole mine. I was going to say Avery. Uh, I think, uh, she's helped me a lot, whether it's just brainstorming, bouncing ideas off each other, or literally opening doors that, uh, you know, she had access to or however you want to, you know, say it. Uh, she's she's helped me a lot in my uh, professional career with streaming. And then also um, she's just been, you know, someone I can learn from in day-to-day -day activities. And, you know, also the the comment that you kind of learn from every collaboration that you're a part of that's so true especially in our industry so with streaming is what we do like full time right so you you start somewhere which is which is nowhere and then you have to get people to watch you um and you know develop a a, a core base of people and it's hard to do and you kind of rely on other people to lend you a hand and so uh that's why i think every piece of collaboration i've got whether it's advice or direct like collaboration in an event or an activity with a person um, they've all really helped me and sculpt my outlook on things and then with 303 specifically uh, it's it's hard because your collaboration is more so uh, with the people that are working within the corporation who have the connections on the outside so it's kind of just uh, it's been everybody for sure uh, but definitely Avery so yeah I love that so much Avery yeah. what about you <laughs> Well, uh, I didn't even start video gaming until I met him, and now it's our <laughs> entire life. Like, I literally sat him down, no joke, before we became Yeah, it was an issue. Yeah, I it, it was an issue. Games. I was like, I sat down, I was like, listen, I'm about to graduate college. Like, we need to start our lives. Like, what are we doing with our lives? Let, let's sit down and talk about this, because he would go away for, like, hours and play video games with yeah. his friends yeah. and so i sat him down and i talked to him and i'm like listen like we need to focus on our lives we need to move forward and he's <laughs> like well, avery we can play video games and i was like what <laughs> <laughs> but it was and i was like <clears throat> this is amazing we can do this and so as soon as he showed me what it was i kind of just like dropped all of my you know hesitations and was like all right if this is what you want to do we're going to make it work. And I actually like never meant to become a gamer at all. I <laughs> kind of support yeah. him. And I was like, okay, so what do we need to get? What do we need to do? How can we make you successful? And in doing that, it just became our lives. And that is how we got yeah. into the gaming industry. And with gaming, you literally start from zero. Like I, I know you guys all start from zero. Everyone starts from zero, but in this industry specifically, there is no entry. Yeah, the weirdest have, part is you have no up. way. No, you're good. You're good. You you have no way of making a name for yourself yeah. unless you know someone. Yep. It's impossible. Yeah. The, so, the weirdest part is you can be really good. You can be great at creating content, however you want to view that. Comedy skill, like 
real life vlogs, but you know, if nobody knows about you, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So you can't go off the, the back of your ability to do that. You have to network and it's just, it's very strenuous. So collaboration is necessary. Yeah. Uh, and it's, you know, there's a fine line, you know, between yeah. collaboration and like what people refer as leeching. So you, you have to <laughs> make sure you stay It's genuine. true. It's very true. Yeah. You have to make sure you stay genuine and that's really the only way you'll ever make it anyway. So, yeah. yeah. Sure, sure. Um, so you guys are all couples and collaborators on and offset. Do you have any advice for couples who want to work together in these creative spaces? Uh, let's start with uh, Janelle and Hino. I think the most important thing is to realize that not every couple is, uh, let's see, how do I put this? Uh, <laughs> has the uh, mental and emotional tools to be mm. able to collaborate. Like it really is a special thing. I have a lot of people who come up to me on set and are like, I don't know how you do it. I could never work with my husband. <laughs> First of all, realize, you know, that, okay, we are, we do have the type of relationship where we can collaborate or no, this is just better for us to do our own thing. I think is probably key. And then also creating boundaries, like we said before, and just really, being able to turn off work because he don't know the same thing. I mean, it'll be midnight. We'll be, you know, sharing a bottle of wine. It's like, Oh wait, I had this great idea. What if, you know, we did this for this fight scene. <laughs> what if we incorporated some wires into this action sequence. And it's really important. Even if it's just 20 minutes in the morning with your coffee to just sit and talk about something besides work and be able to connect. When we're in the middle of a show, we really try and do date nights and just, you know, get a babysitter for the kids. And we go out, we don't invite, we're friends with all the people we work with. Sure. So group of friends, it's like, it's, it's work all, all the, the time. time. <laughs> so it really is important to create those boundaries and be able to like shut off and say, okay, we're gonna talk about something besides work. If you can, if you can make it work, um... It, it's a it's a really special thing. I mean, in some ways, although it brings in new tensions into the relationship, in some way it diffuses others. I think a lot of times couples who, especially if one of them is working a lot and working long hours and they have no idea what they're doing, they have no connection to it or sense of it, that kind of breeds a certain contempt that, you know, you just don't have when not only are you working in the same field and in the same capacity, but you're actually working on the same project, you just kind of get it. So there's none of that, you know, you're not bringing that, that tension home that you're ignoring the, <laughs> or if you are ignoring the relationship, they know why and they kind of, you know, give you little grace. It's very special in that way. Yeah, I, I think it's, it, it's sometimes, I, the way I think of it, it's like, while you're working on a project together, it's almost like you have a common enemy you know, whether that enemy is like a deadline or, you know, figuring out this problem or whatever it is, it's kind of like you can channel all of your frustrations and like emotional energy um, into something that you're kind of like working on together. So, you know, it's it's funny sometimes when, if it happens that we're both off of work and so we're both in our, as you can see, rectangular shaped house, um, <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of when the tensions get a little bit higher because I'm yeah. like, oh, we've lost our common enemy, yeah. you know? <laughs> sure, sure. The, Every uh, I was going to say that the date night thing is we would we not only would we commute separately but we'd kind of have to like do this performative thing when we walk in to say like I'm home hi how are you and <laughs> reestablish sure. yeah <laughs> it's important this is it all works, important yeah. stuff it, it is. Yep. <laughs> whatever works you know Avery and Deerage what about you guys. Um, I think for us, which I know our industry is just a little bit different, but probably very much the same, um, was kind of learning to rejoice in each other's successes, which sounds so basic and simple, but when someone receives recognition um, and you know you guys are both going for the same goal and working in the same industry, um, it's really hard. Like you get in your head and you're like, man, like, did I not do something right today? Like, did I, you know, fall off or or something like that. So really learning to just like be happy for each other and rejoice in each other's successes as opposed to competing against each other. Cause we're both very competitive people. I mean, we're in, <laughs> we're in the industry. So um, we just really had to like take a step back and be like, we're not against each other. Like we're supporting yeah. each other, which sounds so basic, but for competitive personalities it was really tough for us in the beginning. But 
I think we've mastered it pretty well. Well, wow. that's what a relationship is, right? It's two people mm. that have each other's best interests in mind. And so when you can use that teamwork, when you're using like, you know, you're in the same field and you experience the same struggles and you understand the, the way to, to maybe make something work, you can share that with your, your partner and help them. And, you know, it really creates a, a bond that wouldn't have been there um, or maybe diffuses situations like was stated earlier. Uh, and it, it, it has something special to it, you know, whenever you can get past that barrier, like everyone was saying of like saying, well, you know, like me, 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 like, why didn't mm -hmm. I, you know? And so if you can do that, you can kind of reach a new level of your relationship, I think. But also uh, we live in the Colorado area and it's definitely nice to go hiking and stuff yeah. and totally get away from it. So sure. Uh, yeah. So, but I, I do think it has a special uh, essence to it. So much good advice. Like there was some relationship advice sprinkled in there for all of you guys as well. <laughs> I love that. Um, so for everyone, is there a favorite TV show, film, or video game that inspired you to pursue your career path? I'm gonna start with D. Rich and Avery. I really love Cheer, uh, Stranger Things. Yes, yeah, <laughs> there you go, yes. <laughs> Um, for me, it was PUBG. Uh, I absolutely love the Hunger Games series, the movies. I read yes. the books first, then dove into the movies, was obsessed with it. And then he was like, yeah, yeah, there's this new video game out that's like basically the Hunger Games. And I was like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> I'm interested. And so that was the first video game I ever played. That was three years ago. Yeah, getting the connection there with something that she had like relatability to, the Hunger Games, you know? So it's like, oh, what is that? So. That got her on board, but for me, I've been interested in, like I said, Lord of the Rings. It came out when I was like nine. So since I had like, you know, comprehension as a human, like I've been able <laughs> to be involved in these like fantasy, like cool, like movies and uh, video games and growing up on like the PlayStation 2. And so, I, you know, I played games with my friends growing up and, um, you know, whenever you see streaming and you're like, what is this, this person, plays video games all the time and like he's able to pursue his competitive dream of competing at the highest level in gaming and then also relate to all these people and talk to them and create relationships with these people like it really was like yeah I've never known what I wanted to do you know I went and got my degree and I don't know I don't know what I want to do like <laughs> when I saw that it's like yeah that's what I want to do you know so uh that's what I that's what I went for and definitely it's been a an escalation of interest my entire life in the industry and uh and then also the business side of it is super interesting to me too so you know let's say content creation eventually follows through i'm like super interested in the back ends of how video games uh, movie production all of that it's like it's so it's so cool to me and uh, it's definitely something i could you know just have a passion for i think automatically Nice, nice. Um, Ariel and uh, David, what about you guys? Sure. Um, I guess for me, the the movie that really got me excited about documentary was uh, it's called American Movie, um, and it's it's a documentary about a guy making a movie, um, and it's just incredibly charming and funny and interesting and dense. And um, there's that's kind of like what sparked my interest in, in documentary. And I started watching a bunch more and, um, you know, I just kind of learned about myself that I found documentary work to be more interesting for me personally. Um, because you're kind of, you're seeing the real version of somebody, not like somebody else's idea of what somebody is. Sure. Um, and you also have the opportunity to learn a lot as you're working on these kinds of projects, you know, because you're you're observing real life, you're observing somebody that you might not normally connect with. Um, and so it just, it just kind of was like rapid fire clicked with me. I just became obsessed. Nice. Uh, I, I was interested in film since I was a really little kid. So I'd have had too many films to list, but in terms of documentary specifically, I think a certain, switch was flipped in my head when I saw um, Salesman, which is okay. a, uh, a Maisel's Brothers film from like the early 60s. Um, uh, just because of, you know, a lot of what you said, it's a, it's a cinema verite, like character driven thing. There's not many traditional interviews or, or narration and 
Uh, and it's just a, still an amazing film, still like my favorite documentary film. Um, TV work, I mean, I mentioned this earlier, but while we were working on Cheer, we watched uh, Cobra Kai uh, all over yeah. again, just because of how, <laughs> it's just such athletic storytelling. It's very, um, we found, we kind of drew like strength from it and like inspiration, just in terms of how the, the characters are laid out and the themes and it's all ni nicely balanced and it's just so much fun. It's just structured so nicely yeah, and yeah. it really moves. And so after a long day of work, you know, we could just like watch something yeah. that we knew we were in good hands, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so but it's really dense too and it's funny <laughs> it's and funny. it's, yeah. Wow, so many compliments to the chef. This is a perfect transition <laughs> over to Hiro and Janelle. What about you guys? Um. For me, I, I, early on, like any Buster Keaton, old Buster Keaton films, that like the, he was incredible athletic stunt performer, actor, everything. But then any action of like Hong Kong action films, I'm a huge Jackie Chan fan. Um, yes. Any Hong Kong action cinema is something that's huge for me. I can't really specifically pick because I have so many that have really inspired me. I've grown up in martial arts. My father was my instructor and, you know, the Karate Kid was a huge part of my life as a kid. And now being on and coordinating on and on Cobra Kai was and meeting all of these folks on this show is just incredible. Janelle, how about you? Um... I, you know, for me, I, I didn't even really know stunts was a thing. I was a professional dancer and I was dancing in LA and my agent called me because they were looking for uh, tall women who were athletic and graceful. And I was a gymnast. Okay. So I went in and I did the screen test for this movie, which turned out to be Avatar. So I ended up as a motion capture performer with Jim Cameron for three years on the first Avatar. And so that was- Super casual, super casual. My, <laughs> it was one of those things that fell into my lap. And then when I realized what the opportunity was, I just grabbed it and ran with it and put everything I had into it. Um, as one of the motion capture performers, we worked very closely with the stunt team. And that's when I started to see like, oh, wow, like, they're athletic, they're, you know, they're physical, they're performing, they're doing all those things. And I was like, okay, that's what I want to do. So I started, I enrolled in martial arts classes and started to try and get away from some of the pretty dancerness that was in sure. my and, um, and it was after that movie that I just, you know, full steam ahead, pursued stunts and never looked back. Wow, what an amazing, that's an incredible start. That's that's a start I think a lot of people dream about. <laughs> that was amazing. It was amazing. That's so great. So I want to mix it up for a second. I think this is a great opportunity because we have so many uh, amazing people on this panel. Do any of you guys have any questions for anybody else on the panel? I have a question. When you guys were doing cheer, now, do you guys just go in and just from a stunt coordinator's perspective, like I look at that and think like they surely had to have had a stunt coordinator to make sure everybody was staying safe. But when you're going in and you're doing a documentary um, and it's just what they do, I mean, do productions take those same things into consideration or do you just go in and let them do your thing and there isn't really anybody like coordinating or like, how does that work, safety? Yeah. Um, well, the, the strategy that we take with this kind of documentary is to be a fly on the wall. And so okay. we really have very little impact and influence on anything that they're doing. Okay. Um, and so we definitely made sure to work with the coaches and Monica and everything else to make sure that we were out of their way and that we were not going to, you know, get in the way of any of the crazy stuff that they were doing. Um, but that definitely meant that we were filming them have lots of successes and lots of failures right um and so a lot there was you know several um pretty intense injuries that were really uh intense to be there filming <laughs> and it was kind of like we just had to stand back and, and let it happen and and try to capture it and make sure that we were being respectful and everything else and so you know <laughs> in terms of stunt coordinators or precautions like it's documentary, it just was gonna be what it was gonna be, you know? Yeah. I have a question for d -Rich. You You mentioned uh, you, you scout players. What is, does that sound, is that what it sounds like? Like you just have to go start digging through yeah. hours so and hours like, um... of, what do you look for? <laughs> right. 
Right. So, you know, like um, a baseball scout would like go sit in the bleachers of a right, player, yeah. and, like, you know, watch a game and be like, okay, this is what I see. It's similar, right? Um, but of course, it's not as in person. It's never in person, but, um, <laughs> you know, so you, you, you might have heard through the grapevine, through other connections, because you just know people who know about certain esports, right? Mm -hmm. in, in esports, as 303, right, the organization that, that we co own, Underneath them is multiple other different games that we try to have teams a part of that compete at the highest level. No one team is just like, I'm a professional in every single game, right? They have to put time into their craft in that one particular game. So mm -hmm. there are games that I have a good understanding of because I'm very into esports. I think it's fun to watch and I love the mechanical aspect because I play professionally in, in PUBG. So like that's just how my brain works. I just love thinking about it like that. And so uh, it can be something as simple as listening to communications. You can hear them, you know, you can ask them to record their communications. You can ask them to stream privately, um, or you can just watch the public event that they might be competing in, right? A tournament. Right. And you can kind of see like, is this person uh, someone that we feel like, you know, it lives up to all the hype we've heard about, or it could be something like, um, we don't know this person, but wow, they really kind of showed up in this one particular tournament. We need, like, we're looking for one on CSGO. So we're like, yeah, we need to have a conversation with this person. You get to know them a little bit more. And then it's not just like, okay, you're on, right? It, it's kind of like, we have interest in you. Do you have any interest in us? If so, awesome. Let's get some, uh, some scrims in, so tryouts. So basically a way to um, try that person out with the team, see how the, you know, the chemistry is, uh, see how they play with the team and, how they all communicate with each other and just kind of get to know more about that person on a personal level. And then you can like pull the trigger and be like, okay, uh, we can offer this person now, whether that's contractual or just for the time being word of mouth. And, uh, yeah. then the yeah, other part of the organization at that point. So that's kind of how it works. Yeah. Wow. All right. Before we move on any, any more questions, this is like a uh, once in a lifetime. It'd be a dumb question, <laughs> but it's, it's kind of, I'm interested, but I also know it's silly. Um, so as a stunts person, um, do you have like a list of criteria? Like you have to be able to do a backflip for this movie. <laughs> you have to have like a 42 inch vertical. And like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I no. know. Every, every show has different action on it and it requires different things and different performers. It's like Cobra Kai, for example, it's all martial arts. So if you don't yeah. have a martial arts background, you're not sure. really gonna get to be a part of it. Um, uh, Stranger Things doesn't have to do it with anything with martial arts and when I'm pulling people in there I have to have to double kids and have to double monsters that are not there it's like yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's always been really interesting to me yeah like, I mean as getting, a getting hit by you, a monster it's not there yeah. <laughs> as a stunt performer you just the more skills that you have and the more things that you learn um, the more you're going to be more hireable, more hireable for us cool yeah, yeah that makes cool. sense yeah just yeah. broad under, yeah cool yeah all right, you guys. So I want to know what is next for all of you. Feel free to plug anything that's exciting happening or releases coming up. Let's start with David. I uh, am in the process of uh, working with a couple other producers on on a new show that we uh, got development money for. That we okay. start filming this month. I can't really say that much else about it, but um, hopefully it will be. Cool coming out uh, in a year or so from now. Okay, okay. Ariel, how about you? Yeah, um, I just finished up uh, some work. I was a supervising producer on a documentary feature um, that will be coming out at some point. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit up in the air with all this, uh, you know, just the yeah. pandemic. <laughs> um, sure, yeah. So um, I'm really excited about that one. And then I'm also taking some time to do some development work on a couple other projects that I've had in my brain for a while that I haven't had the time to kind of sit down and flesh out. So I'm taking this time right now to do that. Good, good. Uh, Hiro and Janelle. Uh, well, we were in the middle of Stranger Things. Not in the middle. We had just like geared up um, Stranger Things season four. Um, yeah, looking forward to going back to Stranger Things season four, and uh, you know the fate of Cobra Kai season three. Whatever word news that can come out, we are looking forward to that as well. <laughs> cool. cool, cool, Janelle. Yeah, I, you know I was working on Stranger Things with Hito, so. 
And there's some other things in the pipeline. Nothing has been solidified. So okay, okay, yeah. all right. Um, Avery and D. Rich. Um, I'll just give a shout out to the organization. There are a lot of like awesome people on the back ends of that, and they have like a lot of great passion and great core values uh, for the for the industry and the particular business. Three hundred three sports. For the, just to clarify, three hundred three is Denver's area code. Um, you know, <laughs> Three or or esports in general is still very like esports. What is that? You know, like you know. Sure, sure. Even though we're in an environment every single day where that's like, you don't know what esports is. You know, like nobody does. <laughs> nobody knows what it is. So, um, yeah, just a little shout out to that. You know, so look look them up. They're cool, uh, cool people, cool teams. Um, definitely, it's a very interesting, different type of entertainment. And uh, if it's your thing, it's your thing. If it's not, you're not. It's not. But it's you know, just like any other sport, like football, baseball, uh, just more, more complicated probably for someone who doesn't, you know, know much about gaming. So yeah, sure. Avery, how about you? Um, yeah, obviously, I just launched my new clothing line like two days ago, so Ooh. I'm really excited about that. Um, but also on top of 303 stuff that Dylan mentioned, I don't know how much we're allowed to say but 303 is starting to do some really cool events like tournaments and yeah, tournament we have, organization yeah we uh we just got a, a contract that i'm not sure we're allowed to talk about but it's going to be uh really really impactful in the entire industry um running some some new tournaments and some new innovative things in the gaming industry so that's what we're working on right now and i'm super excited to see it come to fruition <laughs> So many awesome things, you guys. That's all the time we have to, for today. Thank you to all of our amazing panelists, Hero, Janelle, Avery Diebrich, Ariel, and David for being here with us today and sharing their wonderful stories and words of wisdom with us. Also, thank you to Impact 24 PR for putting this panel together. And shout out to the amazing Comic-Con International team and to all of you guys watching. You can check out social media handles for our lovely panelists in the description below and be sure to share your thoughts on social media using hashtag art of collab and tag us at impact 24 PR. See you all next time. Bye guys. Thank you. Bye.